he's just so open and he absolutely loves uh, what we uh, what we do for him every time. You know, last year was kind of cool. He went and bought a um, went to the dealership to buy him a brand new Camaro, and he called me up and he said, "What do you think it'd be a really cool Camaro color to buy?" And he's standing there at the dealership with the salesman, and I said, uh, "Why? Well, heck, I don't know. It's your car. I mean, why?" Why am I going to pick the color? He said, well, because you're going to pinstripe You're going to do all this crazy artwork on it. Um, just tell me what color to get. I said, well, my favorite color is black. Well, my two favorite colors are black and dark black. And I said, so my, my natural reaction would be to say, hey, get me a black car. But I said, I'm going to be different. I'm going to kind of step out there. I'm going to say, get a white one. Hey, get a white one with a cream top. And I was absolutely joking. had no idea what color the cars even came in. He said, well, I'm looking at one that's white with a cream top on it, so that's the one I'm buying. So he bought it, and literally the next day he had it here, car had uh, 40 miles of driving from you know from Dallas up to here and, and dropped the car off. And we took the hood and the trunk off, and we did these really big, crazy pinstripe designs. And went inside the car and painted door panels and pinstriped it. We just did a lot of, a lot of crazy artwork on this uh, on this car. So he's a good guy. Matter of fact, we um, we got a, a bike of his that's in a magazine. Uh, just got featured in this month's magazine. That's uh, American Bagger. So uh, it's kind of cool. I think it's one of the first non-bagger bikes that's that's even been in this book. Actually it's Urban Bagger, that's what it is. So it's the first non-bagger bike that they featured in this Urban Bagger magazine. So what I did first is, is I came in and I put the gold leaf size on it. And the size is basically a glue that's gonna hold down this gold leaf. Once you put the size on you've got to let it uh, let it flash off. You don't want it too wet. If it's too wet it, it sucks up the gold leaf. If it's too dry then the leaf doesn't stick to it. So now what I've done is I've, I've put the gold leaf on it and it's only sticking to the size. These couple of other little places that you see me clean off now are where I've gotten the oil off of my skin onto the helmet. And so the leaf just kind of stuck to that, but it won't, it won't stay. So now I've got all the excess wiped off of it. I'm getting ready to outline it and then I'll go in and put a little drop shadow, make it look three dimensional. It, uh, it'll be a pretty cool piece when it's all done. Once the whole helm is done, I'll come back, I'll outline it, put the shadow on it, and then the very last thing that'll be done is it'll be clear coated. So then it'll be protected. Because this girl, she runs it down the, uh, those girls on that bobsled. So uh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be something that's gonna be very durable <laughs> for sure. adding that little element that kind of will give it a three-dimensional look once it's outlined so you can see how you've just done that a little bit and it pops off mm -hmm. there it looks like it's three-dimensional like it's standing completely off of it. What's up there, Dougie? What's up, brother? How you doing? Everything going good for you? Yeah, good. Ready to work on another project? You? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm, I think I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm done on my work. We're going to add a little more craziness to it now? Oh, uh, we'll doctor up a little bit. <laughs> Let's don't be scared. <laughs> 
Well, like I told you before, Tex appeal is kind of like sex appeal. It just doesn't get you near as lucky at the end. You got to probably be a little cleaner on the car. Yeah. What's cool about him is he kind of gives you a direction to go and what he wants, what he knows is popular for what what uh, what his kind of car club guys do, and then I just kind of take it and run with it. Big jacks in almost like transmission stands. And I think we're going to have to tra set a transmission stand up on each corner and then get the gritter to build me a, a metal jig around it and put the plywood on top of it. Because I'm going to need to lay up here to get inside of it, whether it's laying on my stomach or laying on my side, to be able to get in there. And I think the only way to do it is to do it that way. But we can still have, we'll still have plenty of protection. I'll take blankets and roll them up, stick them on the extenders. And, uh, and I'm sure, like right down. So that that doesn't sag in the middle, we yeah. can have critter go down and weld the leg off of this straight down just to the ground. Down, yeah. yeah, just to keep that from sagging in the middle. Yeah, okay. I think that'll be yeah. good. It'll, it'll also be a good way to be able to, we can take the thing and slide it back, and I can lay on my stomach to do the insides of those fender wheels. So I think it'll uh, I think it'll work out a lot better than that. I think that tells a lot about the kind of person shop that, that you're coming into. Because you do, you do cars like this. We do the motorcycles. You know, we work on NASCAR drivers' helmets. You know, next week there might be a drag car in here. There might be, might be, you know, some little weak kid baseball helmets or an airplane. Of course, we don't have an airplane. I tried one time. It didn't work too good. But uh, you know, you can tell a quality of the work that guy does on that kind of stuff is in the shop. You know, this isn't the kind of car that's just in anybody's shop. Just the way it's good, like, like this, you know, those only, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's what I should do. 